All right, we are Comp 305. We're not Comp 305. We are Comp 397. <laughs> See, I made a mistake already. I'll modify this. We're Comp 397. That's web game programming. And uh, we are week one, uh, part one of our broadcast in the fall 2017 semester at Centennial. So this is wrong, but that's okay. I'll change, I'll change this up later. Um, so we're talking about making games with web technologies. And it's a lot different. If you did Unity with me, it's not like Unity. Okay. However, I'm going to make it Unity-like. And what I mean by that is I'm going to try and structure my classes, my objects, and all that kind of stuff just like we do with Unity. So that way, um, some of your knowledge is transportable. Well, it looks like everyone came off the bus today, right? Um, so like I said, for people who came in on time, <laughs> uh, please take a look up on eCentennial. You'll see a link to the Slack channel. Please join the Slack channel. Uh, it is called comp397-f2017. OK, this is the channel. And um, I get all these Slack bots stuff telling me that you guys have joined. Um, so that thank you for all the hearts. Uh, you know, you're going to see uh, we're going to communicate primarily through Slack. One of the things I'm going to be doing, I know it's like Discord. I know we could probably use Discord too. But I find Slack is a little bit more stable in some ways uh, than Discord is. So we're going to use Slack. Um, and I'm going to be putting up all your project details and everything else up on eCentennial for communication purposes, for demonstration purposes, all those things. It's going to be Slack, right? So please sign up for Slack. The link is up on eCentennial. You guys are all smiling at each other because you love each other, right? All right. Um, so that's number one. Two, I'm, I've also shared my GitHub, uh, sorry, GitHub link, which is right here, as well as my YouTube playlist for this course. I'm going to re-record some of the videos starting with today, <laughs> starting with the error that I made today, and I'll, I'll fix that. Um, but um, basically, I'm just recording the classes just for people who, who've never had me before. I record all my classes. It doesn't mean you shouldn't come in, especially for this class, because we're going to do project-based learning which means every class counts where, when we're here. Um, I know there's extraneous reasons why people can't show up to class and so on. I get it. Um, I need a note. I need a reason why you can't be here, because your participation is mandatory. It's, we need to get, in order for us this to be successful, uh, especially for your project teams, you need to be participatory. You need to be here, right? Unless, again, we've arranged otherwise, or you can't somehow, there's a problem. We will be using GitHub, so most of you I know. If you don't have GitHub, for the people who are new that I don't know, I know Victor. Victor, you said you have GitHub or no? You have GitHub? How about the new guys that walked in late? You're good? You're good? GitHub? Okay, good. If you don't have GitHub or if you haven't activated it for a while, please, you need to get that. Okay, we're going to be using a framework, and I'm going to put this up on Slack for you guys as well. Uh, for this course, we're going to be using CreateJS. Um, actually, I shouldn't call it a framework. It's really a suite of libraries, OK? So what the suite of libraries is, is EaselJS, which works with, with the Canvas, the HTML5 Canvas, TweenJS, which allows us to do um, animation, right? Uh, or locomotion, if you will. That's, better. That's a better way to call it, right? We move things from one place to the other, translating objects. SoundJS, which allows us to make sounds on the, on, with the, in the web. Preload.js, which allows us to preload all of our images and sound assets um, in order for us to, uh, to have a, a smoother experience. Okay, So those are the four things we're going to be using. Um, I, I have a lot of tools we're going to use, like I, I, I indicated. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to be using Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code, please download that. I recommend it. I recommend that you bring in your laptop, if you have a laptop. If you don't have your laptop, or if you don't if you don't have access to one, you can certainly use the machine in front of you. It has Visual Studio Code on it, and if it doesn't, you can always download it. Uh, it's a code editor. I will not be using Visual Studio, and I don't recommend it. Okay, if you're someone who wants to use Visual Studio proper, uh, 2017 or otherwise, I think it's too fat, and I'm going to be able to go twice as fast as you, right, with this thing, right? So please, uh, Visual Studio Code is what we're going to be using. However, if you want to use Atom. Or if you want to use another code editor, uh, I don't know why, but Notepad++ or something else, uh, go ahead. I mean, at the end of the day, all I care about is 
that you understand how to code and you understand how these things, these things are formed out. So these are a couple of tools I'm using. Sheets, I highly recommend Texture Packer. Okay, so I'm gonna put these all on, on Slack in a second. Texture Packer is what we're gonna use because we, primarily we're gonna be doing 2D work with sprite sheets. So let me just put this CreateJS stuff first. So I'm gonna use Slack for that. So here's the stuff. So here's CreateJS, right? And here's Visual Studio Code. We'll have it. Here's Texture Packer, which I, which I recommend you grab. grab. Uh, we also need to create some assets in this course, right? So there's some asset creation, 2D stuff we're gonna be doing. Um, I highly recommend if you want to use um, open source resources again, so free and open source, which means you don't have to pay anybody for it. Krita, which is a free and open source digital painting tool, similar to Photoshop, not quite the same, but a very, very easy way of, of, uh, of doing things with uh, a digital manipulation tool, Krita. Uh, please take a look at that one. And... Um, of course, my favorites uh, that I'll be using in this course are, uh, I, still, I still use Fireworks a lot because I think it's not, not Toronto Fireworks. I did that last time too, um, but actually Adobe Fireworks. I subscribe to Adobe uh, Creative Cloud. If you have access to it as a student, it's $29 a month, I think, something like that. Um, but Fireworks is a very lean uh, kind of version of a kind of a graphic manipulation program that you can use. There you go. And um, it's kind of like uh, Photoshop, but light. For making logos, you'll have to make a logo for this course again. Or if you have one already, that's great. But if you don't, then um, I recommend Inkscape. Inkscape for logo creation. OK, so that's uh, it's like creating vector graphics. It's very simple to do. It's like uh, Illustrator, if you will, but way easier to use than Illustrator in some ways. Right? Again, it's open source. so. You have to bear with it. And the last one that a lot of people use that they don't want to pay for is GIMP, right? Uh, which is a good tool again, right? Now, I prefer Krita over GIMP. That's just me. I think it's a better tool. But uh, I'm going to put it there just as, a, as another option. So those are all the tools um, that, you know, sort of from a high level. One more thing. When you start setting up your, your uh, project, we're still going to use Node.js. But we're going to use Node.js as a package manager, and we're also going to use Bower. So the two tools you need are Node.js. So please, if you don't have this installed on your, on your system, it's Node.js. I'm going to put this on Slack. That's why Slack is so important to get, a, to get connected with, because I'm going to put all the links on Slack for you, as well as Bower.io, I believe. I'm going to use these tools for as a package manager. Crazy tool day, right? So we're going to have all kinds of tools. Uh, if you haven't used these tools before and they're new to you, for most of you, it won't be new. Uh, but if, if it's new to you, then um, you know, you're going to get to know them. If they're not new to you, then we're going to get rolling really quickly. Now, I don't know all of you, so some of you, uh, I think there's only three I don't know in the course, the new guys that came in. Um, that's okay. It just, it just means that you might, you have to stop me if I go too fast because I'm going to go. I, I roll right when I when I when I do stuff, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about, and we only have three hours for this course a week, right? It's not a four-hour course, which means we even have more of a challenge because of that. Okay, cool. So, so those are some of the tools we're using, right? Um, but I also have to share with you what we're doing this semester, and I haven't told you how to use those tools yet, but I will. Uh, the first thing I want to do is let's talk about this final project overview. And again, I've been working with, uh, I think I'd like to use it for the courses that I do here, right? So here's what we're doing. We're going to make a 2D game, an original polished 2D game, as much as possible, by the way. And I say polished as, as, as best as we can, right? Um, you'll work with a team of your peers to design, develop, test, and demonstrate your project along throughout the whole process. Each member of the group will be assigned a development role before, during the course of development. So here's the development role, software engineer. OK, now, you might say, well, hold on, Tom. I, I think everyone should be the software engineer. You're right. Everyone will learn how to do this stuff. However, there's going to be one prime in your group, one person that's going to be responsible for scripting and scene generation. Um, 
you must communicate to the to the game designer fully, right? Uh, maintain logical coding standards for the project. Responsible for management of the GitHub repository and change uh, all the change messages. Um, responsible for feature implementation and feature limitations. All that kind of stuff is responsibility of the software engineer, and he has the final say. Or she, sorry, I have to say she has the final say when it comes to. Um, you know the group. So maybe you have a group of three or four or five or six, depending on what what is end up what you're going to make at the end of the day. But depending on what you create, um, you're going to have different roles as primes. Also need a producer slash project manager, and what I mean by that is someone who is responsible for deadlines, scheduling, uh, documentation, setting up your presentations, uh, all that kind of stuff, um, making sure that people do what they're supposed to be doing. Remember, this is a prime. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be doing code. It just means this is your main role, other than coding, right? Artist and sound engineer. Um, someone who uh, makes assets, makes some sounds, makes music, gets music, gets assets, not just makes. Um, if you have to edit assets, that makes sure that it works with what you're, what you're building. Someone who's responsible for all that stuff. Now, a game designer is probably one of the most important roles. and I want you to think about it. They will think about the main mechanic of the game, the main mechanic that you're going to be creating for your original. I'm going to put it in air quotes here. Uh, um, your original 2D game is something like, let's say Eddie and I are working on something, and Eddie says, "You know what, Tom? I have this great idea for a grappling hook platformer." Right? That's the mechanic. Grappling hooks. So you don't just jump over to the next platform. You grapple over. Right? That's the main mechanic. Right? It has to be something like that. It can't just be, I'm making Mario 1.1. Oh, you're going to make it with your own mechanic, OK? And the designer is going to come up with all the rules for the game. So how do you score? You know, how does the game work? Uh, he or she has the vision for how the game is going to function, OK? That's what it's all about. So during the course of this semester, not only are you learning how to code in, in JavaScript and TypeScript and tools and everything else, but also adhering to the, you know, the, the standards we use when we, we create a game project, right? Um, there's also a QA tester role, right? Someone who, you know, who actually does the play testing, uh, making sure everything's bug free, that all the features run as they should run, all that kind of stuff. That is definitely a role that's really, really important. Okay. Now, there's four or five roles. Maybe there's only three people. What does that mean? It means that some people may have to do more than one thing, have more than one prime, wear, wear, wear more than one hat, so to speak. And, and the reason for that is because we just don't have a big, big teams. Um, your teams will be limited to six and only for the most complex project, which is the platformer. And you might think platformer is easy. <laughs> you have to do your own physics. You have to have your own stuff. It's, you know, it's, remember, we're, we're coding from scratch here. So um, it's not as easy as you think it is. Um, and you know, in order for us to, to, to go forward, you, know, you, have a, you have to have a bigger team. You're going to create some assets in this, in this course. All right? It's not just downloading and, and using from other places, which means you have to know a little bit about asset creation and so on. OK, hey, welcome. No problem. So, um, so how, how do we break this out? So from a deliverable perspective, Part one, you'll do your game pitch and your game design document. The first draft of your game design document is due week three. Not now, a couple weeks from now, right? Remember, we're going to be learning stuff along the way from now until then, OK? I'm going to you know, talk about how to put together your game design document and all that kind of stuff. If you've had me before, you know how to do it. If you've had Wallace before, you know how to do it pretty much. We're going to go over it again. So make sure you know how to put that thing together, right? Um, we're, week five, you'll have another part of your game design document to put together, version two, because you are further uh, refining what you're going to put together, right? Uh, by week seven, you're going to have your first playable. There is no exam in this course, but your first playable will at least have placeholder graphics, maybe not, no animations maybe, but some graphics that represent what the game is going to look like, right? And the main mechanic must be present in your first playable. That means if you have a grappling hook pro platformer, then the grappling hook must work. Okay, if you have to have a flashlight to go into a room of, to see stuff with a room or something like that, I don't know. Then the, the flashlight better work. Your your cloud, you know your um, um, you know basically your fog of war has to work if that's how it's going to work. Whatever your mechanic is has to work, right? 
because this is your viable product. You're testing your product to see if it's viable. And if it doesn't work by your first playable, it's not going to work. <laughs> You're not going to get it if you haven't got it by week seven. Put it that way. Okay? We have a break of a week. We come back. And then your first alpha, your alpha uh, build or your alpha is due by week 10. Now, these have incrementing amounts of weight attached to them. For example, I think part one and part two are each worth 5%, right? And by part three, I think that's worth 15%. Or 10% or something like that, right? So uh, I'll tell you right now, this course is weighted heavier during the second half of semester compared to the first half of semester, for good reason, by the way, right? Because you're still learning your skills and all that kind of stuff, right? Your alpha build is due week 12. Uh, sorry, your beta build is due week 12. Beta is like you've got everything good. Uh, alpha, you only need one level working and a start screen and an end screen. By beta, you must have three levels. One of them must be a tutorial level. So to show the player how to play, right, with a short level. And the other two levels um, is going to be a, um, you're going to have a, 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 a real level that lasts around five minutes, right, where you are able to, um, you know, show off the, the type of game that you're making. Your final level will be either a boss or some kind of other level that, that shows progression, okay? So there's three levels always in the, in the, in the beta. In the alpha, you only need to show one. That would be level two. You don't. I don't want to see the tutorial level in level in, in your in your alpha. Just level one. Like, show me what your level one would look like, right? Your tutorial level is really level zero, right? So you have level zero, level one, and level two. That's what I'm asking for, with a start screen and an end screen. So we have to set all that stuff up, all the structure, the finite state machine that we're going to build together by from scratch. All that stuff is is the stuff we have to build up for you to get there. Um, then part six, you have your code freeze, so you're not going to develop anything else after week 12, right? All you're doing is tweaking, okay? And you're going to do a post-mortem blog. You and your your team are going to put together a little blog to kind of talk to talk about what your what this what went well, what didn't go well with your project, that kind of stuff. And the final week is your final presentation, right? Where you're going to basically show um, the, your you know your product to everybody, your final presentation and your final release. Okay, let me tell you this. This is why it's critical that you're here every time. Because your first presentation is going to be week three. It's coming two weeks from now, right? You and your team are going to present. Week seven is your second presentation. You must attend, right? Week 10, week 12, and week 14 are all presentations, right? You're going to present your product over and over and over to us, right? Now, there's not going to be a lot of teams. So we're talking about like, you know, two, three, four teams, let's say, of people getting together presenting their products, and, and really uh, tightening and honing their presentation skills all around what they're building for the semester, okay? So this is the plan. And this project is worth 80% of your marks, okay? So there's no tests, there's no exams. The other parts are some homework assignments I'm gonna give you for one and 2% here and there, just to get you used to using the tools I'm, I'm gonna show you over the course of the semester, right? And today is worth 5% because you're gonna be doing team forming. Right. So that's really it in a nutshell. Um, let me go over a little bit more details for you about the type of games you can make. OK, now we've limited them. There's only three types of games I'm going to allow. 2D platformer. Setup, six members. Why is it six? You're going to say six members for like a 2D. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm not joking because you have to do physics, movement with jumping, enemies, traps, obstacles, at least one unique mechanic and power-ups okay those are all required for this thing right so if you're going to do a platformer you need six people two software engineers one producer or project manager one game designer one artist and one quality assurance manager these are all primes of course you're going to do all the other development pieces together right but that's uh you know your uh, your platformer a top-down side-scrolling space shooter maybe we should have put this first because this is the easiest but i'm only allowing three people to do it now you're gonna say three people, maybe that's even too much time. Yes and no, because I want multiple bullet types. It's like a bullet, it could be a bullet hell. Um, I want enemy movement patterns. So when they move towards you, right? Uh, Multi-stage boss at, the, at level three. So you hit him and then he, he dies a little bit and then you hit him again, he dies more. And then finally you kill him, right? Something more interesting, right? Uh, a distinct setting progression. So maybe you're going to go from the city you know, to the mountains and then from the mountains to space. I don't know what it's going to be like. Something more interesting. And then maybe as an option, a timed challenge event. 
Like for example, you know, you have uh, like in Galaga, where you go dun, 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 and then here's the challenge challenge level, right? As an option, uh, that's all the top down side scrolling space shooter. Okay, these are all required things. Now I'm going to go into more detail when I actually give you the depending on which one you choose, we'll create more details for you. Okay. Um, the last one is a top-down tank-like game. And I'm, I'm not saying it has to be tanks. It could be mechs. It could be kaiju. It could be whatever, right? But in this particular case, as you're saying, there's multiple tank classes. It could be like two people fighting each other. It's two-person local multiplayer that you're going to make, OK? This requires four people, all right? So more people to, to, to bake this one, right? And it's way more challenging on the web than anything else, like really challenging stuff to make to, to make happen, right? So you're going to make distinct terrain with destructible objects, things that you can destroy, right? Uh, some kind of arced shooting, right? This is actually spelled wrong. I should say arced shooting. So in other words, like I use a bomb or some kind of grenade that lobs over and goes boom. You know, it makes makes maybe makes a crater or something. You might have bombs, power ups, and abilities. Um, so top tank, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible here because tanks, I mean, you could be anything. It can be like, you know, monsters fighting each other. It could be some kind of, you know, uh, player versus player environment, right? They're all, they all have their challenges, every one of these project types, okay? And that's why you need to combine with other people. This is not a lone project. I will not accept you working on your own. You do not have that option in this course, okay? You can't say, Tom, I can't find a, a team, a team, you know, whatever. I will not accept growing these teams or shrinking them, right? So you can't say, well, can I make a tank game with five people? No, it's four. We've already sized this stuff, right? Can I make a uh, you know, space game with five people? Hell no. It's only two or three. Worst case, if I don't have enough members, and let's say, for example, there's, there's a group of five, and they want to do, you know, they want to work together, and they don't want to do the tank game, then I'm going to split you up. Three of you are going to do one kind of shooter game and two of you are going to do I'm going to do the other because I guarantee in this course people are missing right so I'll just assign the next person into that other group right I'm going to be setting groups up on East Centennial so when you submit you submit as a group as a team there are going to be some drop boxes that I create that are not team that are only individual like homework that you have to do on your own okay like I said that extra 15 percent that I'm going to be playing with after today okay so that is the way we're going to do it for details, and by the way, this document is up on East Centennial. You can look at it yourself, right? I will do more details for each of the each of the drop boxes. So each of the deliverables is going to have marks associated with them and so on. For now, you just have a very high level understanding of what the game is about. But know this, from a planning perspective, that part one, your game pitch and game design document is 5%, and that's due week three. You must create a, pro a, a PowerPoint project that includes a title slide, a planning slide, a game overview slide, game definition of what this thing is, who are you, what's your roles, and um, all the, uh, you know, your prep that you're going to make so that you're going to prove to us that you're going to be ready to be successful, right? Uh, I want the presentation document as well as your game design document version one, and that is by week three, okay? So why is this so important? Why are we doing a pitch? Because it's important to understand how to pitch your product, right? Especially in a game jam or level up, that's a you know something that's happening um, a lot now. People go to level up uh, if you're a game game designer or, or indie game developer. Um, I'll talk more about level up later on, right? Um, the great thing about that is if you go to these kinds of activities, events, then you know you can get recognized if you want to be an indie developer, uh, those kind of things. And it's good to understand how to pitch your your game. Uh, how people are going to, you know, how you can get people excited about it and that kind of thing, right? As well as really defining what your game is about. All right, so the part two, which would be week five, you're going to hone your game design document even more. And you're also going to provide your GitHub link because by then you should already have started programming your game, right? So you've got some more details about your game because you really don't know anything by, until week five. And besides, I got to show you how to do everything, right? I got to show you how to build your project how to start setting up your, your, your stuff and everything. All, your, all the base things we need to build, we're going to build by then, right? So then by week seven, right, this is where you do your first playable. So it's not a complete game. You have placeholder graphics, but the main mechanic must be visible. We must be able to see what you're doing, you know, in the game. What, what makes your game different than everything else, right? Again, 
In this case, I need a live link to your site. So you're going to put this up. This is a website you're making, right? You're making a web game. So this thing must be live somewhere at the end of the day, right? Uh, a game design document version 3 and a GitHub link to your project repository. Okay? And as you can see, if you look at it, I'm not going to go through all of them. They're progressively more uh, weighted. So this is 10%. The alpha is worth 15%. It uses, um, you basically should have most of your levels. Instead of all three levels, my thinking is, you should have your first level, your uh, your start screen, one level, and your end screen. That's by alpha. And then your beta has everything in them. Now, it's also 95% complete, right? And what I mean by that is, so week 12, you're almost done. You're almost done your whole game, right? All you're doing is tweaking and feature fixing at this point, OK? So there's not a lot of work to do. And that's why week 13, we're doing our, our, um, our code freeze and post-mortem, right? Now, this is a blog. Um, what I'm, I'm going to look for is a little bit of writing for you. So there's a, there's a good, it's going to hit all kinds of skills for you this semester. It's going to hit, you know, your development skills, your presentation skills, your writing skills, your storytelling skills, um, all those kind of things. And I think it's really good for a game developer to have all these things as a good generalist anyway. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about these more as we get closer. And then finally, of course, your final project, which is due, um, Week 14, I think I got this on this slide. Yeah, there we are, week 14. OK, um, here's the trick. If you don't show up for your presentations, you get zero. I don't care if you're part of the team, right? Because presentation day is the most important day. It's game day for you and your team, right? And what I mean by that, unless there's some kind of medical reason why you can't be here, right? Or something that you've agreed to, where you've talked to me in advance, way in advance, uh, for me to know that you can't make it, you're coming. And if you don't show up, you're not there. Further than that, um, what I'm going to have is a bunch of contracts that I'm going to get you to sign today for you and your team, right? The contract is going to be your how you're going to behave when, when it comes to working with your team. So you're going to basically agree that what your meeting days are, um, what happens if someone doesn't show up, what happens if someone doesn't do their work. We're going to go over that together, right? So I want you to look at that. And I've, I'm going to show it to you now. And it's going to be a little different than what I did in the um, kind of had something similar going earlier. Uh, but I want to kind of uh, talk about the contract template now. So here's your contract template. And I'm going to share this with you with a Dropbox in a second, where you have your team name, right, as an example. And you're going to show your members. So here's all your members, up to six, let's say, with your contact information. Here's some team expectations, right, as an example. Uh, like we're going to say, we understand through the course all team members are designated as, as developers, see, as developers. And this is not written by me, but I think it's a great little um, template that was created. And what you're going to do is design on, decide on meeting times. So all this yellow stuff is meeting times. And what happens if, um, you know, your expectations aren't met? There is a section here that says, hey, guess what? If your members don't do anything, uh, they're going to be flagged as unproductive, and you're going to get a mark of zero. All right, so you can't just get along by someone doing all the work and you just floating by. That's not this kind of course. If that's the course you're you're looking at uh, to go through as an elective, that's not this course. Maybe you need to go to another course, right? This course is hard. You learn web technologies. Um, you learn how to you know modern stuff, modern um, you know uh, game development processes and practices, right? So you know you have to apply yourself. Here's your agreement, which basically says, hey, we the team of whatever the team name is. Please don't use team name as your team. That would be bad, right? And don't use team TBD, right? Or something else, make a real team name. And then you sign off for today. What I'm looking for, because this will be due today, is I'm gonna look for your name and a signature font, some kind of signature font that you put in here for now. This is a living document. It'll be due by end of day today. However, we'll revisit it if you, make, if you need to make amendments, right? If you need to change your contract a little bit, or if a new member comes in, because remember, not everyone's here, right? Um, or if you want to change something that, that you've written that you don't feel is fair or something like that, OK? So a little different than what we've done in the past. I think it's a good start for us. Um, what I want to do now is take a short break. And when we come back, I want to start talking about uh, team forming. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to actually talk any technology with you whatsoever until we, get, we, we figure your teams out and what you want to build. Okay, that's the first thing I want you. So I want you to get together with your team right now. 
whoever they are, or if you have an idea of who you want to work with. If you don't have an idea, I can introduce you. But start talking to people here in the class to, to find out what they can do or what they, what they want to do, right? Remember, there's three types of projects that will allow only. There's not, you can't just blue sky it. You can't just say, I want to make a role-playing game. Notice that that's not on there. I don't want, there's no puzzle games, right? None of those kind of things. Because once you make a role-playing game or a puzzle game, we're never going to finish. It's not going to happen, okay? So I'm not going to be showing those things. That's that's the the way the bottom line, okay? So let's get to it. Um, let's take a short break right now. It's, we're starting off at 140. I've kind of talked for about 40 minutes or so, and I think if we take a, a short 10 minute break, uh, when we come back, get together with your teams. We'll have a little bit of time for you to team form, and then we'll get to uh, tool creation and everything else. Okay? I'll stop recording now.